And now for... Johnny Dollar. I have your call to Universal Adjustment Bureau in Hartford. Oh, thank you, operator. Hello. Pat McCracken. Johnny Dollar, Pat. Oh, Johnny, I've been trying to reach you. Yeah, I'm in Sarasota, Florida. Oh? Huh? Been down here the better part of a week and just thought I'd check oh, to well, see... Oh, Johnny, I'm glad you called. Can you grab a plane out to the West Coast? Don't see why not. Good. Now, your contact will be Arthur Arthur at Western Maritime and Property, office in Beverly Hills. Got it. What's it all about, Pat? Piracy, according to him. What was that? You heard me. Now, for a second there, I thought you said piracy. Maybe you'd better go out there and see him, huh? Yeah. But I still don't believe it. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Welcome, William Bendick. Nobody can act up to par with a nasty cold. I check my cold distress the fast way with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Four-way is the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Then you feel better quickly. Four-way cold tablets, only 29 and 59 cents. Now, a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Western Maritime and Property Insurance Company, Beverly Hills office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Baldero matter. Expense account item one, 146.85, plane ticket to Los Angeles. Earl Foreman, with whom I just finished working on a case, drove me from Sarasota to the International Airport in Tampa. Well, I don't know why not, Johnny. Oh, are you kidding? In this day and age... A bunch of bearded gorillas stripped to the waist, bandanas wrapped around their heads, waving cutlasses. I didn't say that, John. And, and, and Long John Silver, I suppose, leading the boarding party. Oh, or all that kind of stuff went on a couple of hundred years ago. Sure, sure. But do you remember that palatial yacht that was boarded and taken over just off San Salvador about a year ago? Well, yes. Convicts from a prison colony on the island of Isabella. They had control of that yacht for three days, Johnny. And when they left, they took along everything of value they could get their hands on. Yeah, I remember. You don't call that piracy? Well, maybe so. You think that's what happened in this case? There's only one way to find out. The flight to Los Angeles was uneventful. Thanks to the time zone differential, it was only 4.30 p.m. when I arrived. Item two, six dollars even for a cab to the Beverly Hilton, where I parked my bags. Item three, ten cents for a phone call to Arthur Arthur who, if I remember correctly, was quite a character. Good insurance man, but, uh, well, a character. Item four, 75 cents for a cab to his office on Wilshire Boulevard. Yes, it all happened somewhere off the coast of Mexico. Mr. Baldston and his party were just cruising around. They were just taking life easy. Uh, Baldston is the owner of the yacht? H.B. Baldston. Oh, he's a big stockbroker. He lives here in Beverly Hills at 3124 North Roxbury Drive. And what's the name of his yacht? Uh, the Baldero. Oh, it is a tremendous thing, John. It's, trem it's over 100 feet from stem to stern. Wow. It's 100 it feet long. Arthur, uh, yeah. where does he keep it now? Where does he keep it? Oh, at his dock. He's down there in Balboa. Oh, you know where Balboa is. Yes, yes, I oh, know. Oh, one of the nicest places by the ocean in all of California. Yes. Now, Johnny, if I ever yes, wanted to thanks. retire... Uh, that uh, who were the, the guests on board? Well, let me see. His wife, of course, and Mr. and Mrs. Gerald Hooper and young Richard 
Spidle, and Lee Woolway. Just cruising around, huh? Yes, but they'd planned to sail on up to San Francisco for that big charity ball up there on the 30th. Oh. <laughs> That's why they all had their finest clothes and most expensive jewelry with them. Oh? <laughs> yes, sir. $394,000 worth of jewelry. Stolen. Oh, yes. yes. Plus a few other things, too. Mostly silverware. Things like that. Actually, it was reported to me by one of the guests on the yacht. These, uh, these pirates simply pulled alongside in the middle of the night, held them at gunpoint, took the stuff and left. That's right, Jeff. There were two of them. Oh, my, they must have been horrid fellas. Just where off the coast of Mexico did this happen? Well, I'm not quite sure. Mr. Balderston was, uh, well, he, he was kind of vague about where it happened. You know, he's kind of vague. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I'd better talk to him. Uh, yes, by all means, John. Yeah. <laughs> Art, I'll see you later. Item 550 bucks, deposit on a rental car. I drove to the Baldiston's home on North Roxbury. It was a tremendous place in one of the most wealthy parts of Beverly Hills. A snazzy-looking sports car was parked in the broad driveway, and as I walked up to the front door, another car, a big sedan, pulled in the drive. A heavy-set, well-dressed, rather nice-looking man of about 50 got out of it and came over to me. Are you, uh, looking for someone, young man? Well, I believe this is the Baldiston residence. That's right. And I'm Harry Baldiston. Oh, well, my name is Dollar, Mr. Baldiston. Johnny Dollar? The insurance investigator that Mr. Arthur sent for? That's right, sir. Well, come in, come in. We'll have a cocktail or two. I, uh, understand it's that time of day, and I'm sure you won't object. Not a bit. Good. And I'll tell you all about the unfortunate affair aboard the Baldero. Happened just night before last, you know. So I understand. But I'm not quite clear as to just exactly where you were when it happened. Down off the Mexican coast, Dollar. Uh, sit down, sit down. Thanks. Yes, it took us nearly 12 hours to get back to Balboa. And at 11 knots, well, you can figure it out for yourself. Uh, Mary Lee. Yes, Harry? Come on down, dear. I want you to meet Mr. Johnny Dollar. Oh, all right, dear. Now, I'll pour us a drink and tell you all about it. So he poured. His wife joined us, and we talked. But I'm afraid I didn't learn much more than I already knew. They'd both been asleep when it happened. The so-called pirates had come aboard very quietly. Both they and their guests had been held in their respective cabins by one of the men while the other gathered the loot. The men had worn long oilskin raincoats, had nylon stockings pulled over their faces to conceal their identity. Only one of the guests, Lee Wilway, had even seen the boat they'd used. Balderson never did tell me definitely where it happened. And the more I listened, the more suspicious I got. Yeah, suspicious of him. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. There goes a treasure car. There goes another. And another. And one of them may be your car. Yes, folks, you may have a Fram treasure hunt filter in your car worth $1,000 and not even know it. A Fram filter worth 1,000 silver dollars. A filter change is important to today's cars, so important that Fram Corporation, in conjunction with its silver anniversary, is paying $60,000 in cash to get you to check your filters now. Last year, 10,000 secretly numbered Fram filters were distributed all over the United States and installed in cars during regular servicing. These filters are worth from $1 to $1,000. You may have one in your car and not even know it. A Fram filter worth 1,000 silver dollars. Check your oil filter and air filter now. If there's a specially numbered Fram filter in your car, you will win up to 1,000 silver dollars and your dealer will win the same amount. Get in on Fram's big silver treasure hunt. Check your car filters now. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Baldero Matter. <laughs> It was hard to tell just where we were. I keep an engineer on board, and he'd been at the wheel most of the day. But you were anchored for the night. Yeah, that's right. You see, we were just killing time until it was time to head north to San Francisco and that uh, charity ball the ladies wanted to go to. Yes, the charity ball. And after waiting two months, now I suppose we'll just have to forget it with all our jewelry gone. Didn't you check your position to find your way back to Balboa? Just headed east, then followed the shoreline. You say that one of your guests... Incidentally, I want to check with them. Oh, by all means. I'll give you their addresses. Yes, there may have been details that we've forgotten, overlooked. After all, we were a bit upset over what had happened. 
And probably more than a little confused. But I know I was. You said that one of your friends got a look at the boat these men used. Yes, yes. Lee Wilway ran up on deck. Of course, it was dark and there was some fog, but uh, Lee said it was a black boat. Well, now you can't... A long black speedboat. Maybe. By the time the rest of us got up there, it had completely disappeared. Then uh, I had uh, Beacon start the diesels, and we made the run back to Balboa. You notified the Coast Guard, of course. Not until we got in. What? Well, Lee had been fooling with the radio earlier. The rest of us were in the main cabin playing cards. And, uh, well, when we tried to send out a call, the transmitter wouldn't work. Where'll I find this Lee Wilway? Here, I've written down the address for you. And our other guests, too. Mr. and Mrs. Hooper and Richard Spidor. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Dollar... Mr. Baldiston... He is. I'll see you later. Yeah, there was something very funny about this whole thing. But I wasn't quite sure just what. I checked with Mr. and Mrs. Hooper, elderly, very quiet and dignified. Their story was the same as the Baldistons. Except in one thing. They weren't at all sure it had taken them any 12 hours to get back to port. I drove to the address of Lee Wilway. It was a small apartment below Wilshire. After all, if Lee was the only one awake and alert enough to have taken a good look at the pirates in their boat... Yeah, and what about the yacht's radio that wouldn't work after Lee had spent the evening fooling with it? Yes? Oh, I beg... Well, uh, that is, I'm looking for Lee Wilway. I'm Lee. Who are you? Believe me, Charles of the Ritz would have been proud of this one. A living doll. 23 or 4, she was tall, slim, and a pretty face topped with red hair that looked oh so carefully disarranged. Yeah, she was a beauty. And yet, as we talked, I couldn't quite picture this gal on a yachting trip with the Baldistons. Gee, no, I haven't the least idea where we were when it happened, Johnny. It could have been a million miles out to sea, but if Baldy... <laughs> I mean, Mr. Baldiston says it took us 12 hours to get back. It must have taken us 12 hours. And you're sure you didn't recognize either of the men who boarded the yacht, Lee, huh? No, I certainly didn't, but I saw the boat they had. It was a long black one. Solid black? Solid black. Did anyone else on board see that boat? No. At least, I don't think so. What did you do after they left? Went up to the bridge, to the radio. Uh, didn't they tell you? To call the Coast Guard? Well, yeah, sure, only... They said uh, you were at the radio earlier. Yes, just listening. But after it was over and I tried to call the Coast Guard, well, it just wouldn't work. Like another drink, Johnny? The Baldistons and Hoopers were playing bridge earlier. Yes, look, Johnny, have you had dinner yet? Where were the other guests? Dickie boy? Yes, Dick Spidle. No, I don't know. And what did he do after you were boarded and robbed? Huh. He was probably down in his cabin with his head under the covers, scared to death. If he had any nerve, he could have stopped them, too. What do you mean? Well, his was the one cabin they didn't go into. They didn't bother him. And he knew there was a rifle they used for shooting sharks. He knew it was on the rack just outside his door. And if he'd come up shooting with it, why, Larry, well, those pirates would have jumped overboard and run for home. I just bet they would. Apparently, you don't think much of this Dick Spidle. Would you? I mean, acting like that? I mean, doing nothing when he could have? Incidentally, when I stopped at the Baldistons, I saw a sports car outside. Oh, yeah. Isn't that a dreamboat? It's Larry's. Who's Larry? Larry Baldiston. He's my... Oh, gee, Johnny, I'm getting hungry. Why don't we have another drink and then have some dinner? Hmm? Sorry, but I'm afraid I can't. I'm not used to being turned down, Johnny. Well, I'm sorry, but there are a couple of people I've got to see. Oh, like who? Your friend Dick Spidle, among others. Oh. I'll see you later, Lee. I'll be here, Johnny. I guess I'm not as familiar with the streets of Los Angeles as I thought. It took me over half an hour to find Spidle's apartment. It was one of those ultra swank affairs just off Sweetser Avenue below the famous Sunset Strip. I parked under a big palm tree. Then, as I backed out of my car, another one roared up and stopped behind me. The glare of the headlights partly blinded me. Hey, just a minute, you. Huh? Johnny Dollar, huh? That's right. Who are you? Here. Oh! Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Ever have trouble sleeping nights because of acid indigestion, heartburn, or gas? Then remember, for acid indigestion, nothing but Tums works so fast to make you feel so good so long. 
Toms work fast. Get rid of the burning excess acids that won't let you sleep. In a matter of seconds, you begin to feel better, and Tums Relief stays with you. You relax, go to sleep pleasantly, because Tums bring complete relief. Get rid of burning excess stomach acids completely. Nothing but Tums works so fast to make you feel so good so long. So when acid indigestion keeps you awake, take Tums. Keep a handy roll of Tums on the night table, within easy reach. And remember, there's no mixing or fixing with Tums. You don't even need to get out of bed. Get the very best. Get Tums, 10 cents, three roll pack a quarter. Or get the new six roll pack with free metal carrier, only 49 cents. Always carry Tums, T-U-M-S. Keep your tummy under Tums control. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. The headlights of my attacker's car had partly blinded me, but I'd seen enough of it to know it was the same one I'd seen at the home of Mr. Boldiston. Yeah, his son Larry's. But I came to to find myself parked behind the wheel of my own car. And lying on the seat beside me were five crisp hundred dollar bills and a note. Take this money and get out of town, it said. You have no case anyway because the things that were stolen off the yacht have been returned. So you may as well leave while you have your health. No signature. There was only one person in the world I wanted to see at that moment, Larry Baldiston. But I felt a bit rocky since I was at the front door of Dick Spidel's apartment. Since I'd really come to see him, and if I was lucky, he might have a good stiff drink handy. Feeling better now, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, yeah, I am. Thanks, Dick. It's Richard, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, sure. But uh, go on with what you were saying. Well, the whole thing was absurd, of course. But the only reason Mrs. Balderson insisted on taking Lee on that yachting trip into the charity affair, and of course I was supposed to be her escort, was to shame her, to shore her up. How do you mean? Well, after all, in spite of her beauty, she is a rather common person, rather cheap. So Mrs. Balderson hoped that facing her with the ladies and gentlemen who attend the ball would embarrass her. Oh, I see. And that she'd realize she has no place among people like ourselves. People like you are just too good for her. Well, to put it bluntly, yes. In any event, Mrs. Balderson hoped it would break off this rather sordid romance. Romance? Mm -hmm. She and Lawrence Balderson. Larry, she calls him. And Lee is only after his money. But I take it Larry got wind of this little plan. Lawrence said that he would prevent its being carried out if it was the last thing he ever did. So he staged the piracy bet. Oh, I'm sure it was he. He's always done silly things like that, Mr. Dollar. Rich, headstrong, spoiled as he is. So, when I heard the noise up on deck, I simply locked myself in my cabin and refused to budge when he and whoever he had helping him boarded the yacht. All because you were scared? I... Beg your pardon. Thanks a lot, Dick. It's Richard, if you help. Oh, and incidentally... Yes? You think Lee Wilway was in on it, too? That that's why she spent so much time on the ship's radio earlier in the evening? Indubitably. So that she could guide him to the yacht in his speedboat. His speedboat, of course, has all sorts of radio equipment aboard. What color is that speedboat? A mahogany. Why? Lee said the pirates were using a solid black boat. Which simply proves she was on to his plan. What do you mean? Well, the stupid... The wench was lying, that's all. Yeah, maybe you're right. Thanks, Dick. <sighs> it's Richard, if you don't... Mr. Dollar, do come in. Thank you, Mrs. Balderston. My husband's on the telephone talking to the engineer of our yacht down in Balboa. Oh. And what do you think has happened? I fine, think I can guess. That's fine. Just stay on watch and I'll be back down there to pick those things up in the morning. Goodbye. It's true, Mary Lee. Oh, splendid. Whoever took them from us returned everything to the boat. Everything is... Oh, Mr. Dollar. Did you hear that? Yes, I heard. Where's your son, Larry, or Lawrence, or whatever you call him? Larry? Well, as a matter of fact, oh, the I... dear boy came in just a little while ago. Where is he? Uh, in the study, I believe. He said he had a call to make on the other phone. Thanks. Why, what's wrong, Mr. Dollar? Uh, Mr. Dollar! Yes, I saw you through the window, Lee. Trying to make up to that guy, Dollar. And let me tell you this. Let me give you this. Ooh. Larry, what is it? Want some more, Larry? Yeah. Now, listen, Dollar. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, you and that family of yours can... Well, I'm set up. I said, do you want some more or do you want to start talking? Okay, okay, I did it. 
I rigged the whole thing, uh, Jimmy Driscoll and I, because I was fed up with the way Mother was trying to run my life. Lawrence, dear. Yeah, but maybe she was right about Lee, after all. Of course she was, son. Why, of course, dear. But now, look, Dollar, if you think you can get away with barging in here and slugging me... Oh, oh no, you... No, stop hey. stop hey. Stop yes, why? Yeah. Oh, more? Oh, my God, you big brute. Enough, Larry, huh? You had enough? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, Dollar. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Baldiston, but I kind of owed it to him. Dollar, I've been hoping somebody do that for a long time. What? Sure, I, I've i spoiled him, too. It's been my fault as much as his mother's. My fault? But I never had any idea he'd carry things as far as he did. Of course, if you like, sir, I could prefer assault charges for his attack on me earlier. No, 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 I don't think it'll be necessary. And I'm much obliged to you. But my poor boy... Just leave him alone, Mary Lee. Oh. And suppose you leave us alone while I settle things with Mr. Dollar. Fee on this case? Forget it. The 500 that Larry mistakenly tried to bribe me with, plus a nice fat check for Mr. Baldiston. Well, much as the thought of it hurts me, let's forget the expense account, too. Okay? Okay. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Who's gonna win the thoroughbred Kentucky Club? Thoroughbred. Who's gonna win that horse and make it pay? Lots of money. Well, Kentucky Club. Fight tobacco has to find the winner. So the horse is here. The time is near. Get your entry blank today. Yes, enter the annual Derby Day contest sponsored by Kentucky Club's nine brands of pipe tobaccos. First prize, a thoroughbred bay colt, son of famous oil capital, who won over $580,000. Jockey Ted Atkinson helped select this prize colt. You name him and he's yours. He could win a fortune for you. Get Kentucky Club Derby Day contest entry blanks free at tobacco counters now. Hey, who's going to win the thoroughbred Kentucky Club thoroughbred? Who's going to win that horse and make it pay? Want the money? Well, Kentucky Club, Mike Tobacco has to find the winner. So the horse is here, the time is near, get your entry by today. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week? Oh, wait a minute. Belated congratulations to station WGLS in Beckley, West Virginia on its 20th anniversary. Next week, I really go fishing. Yeah, for a body in the middle of Lake Mead. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Eleanor Audley, Vic Perrin, Howard McNear, Larry Dobkin, Will Wright, Carlton G. Young, and Jack Edwards. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking.